Do you need to machine a seedle but not sure where to start? We do this often, I'll show you how. Hey, it's Justin from Portland CNC. We machine a seedle, also known as Delrin, pretty regularly. It may seem scary, but it's actually one of the easier plastics to machine. Like any material, there's a sweet spot where you get beautiful chips and edges. If you miss that, well, you get... Go! I'll show you cam settings in Fusion 360 for a few operations and some CNC routing on our ShopSuper router. Just a quick note, this video is split up into chapters, so if you scroll down in the description, you can jump to just the section you want to see. Tip 1. Facing using a big bad shear hog. Often you need to flatten and thickness stock. You do this for a few reasons. To create a parallel flat face to then flip over and use as a reference surface, or you might also just need to remove material from a large area quickly. Well, facing is the answer for both of these. Here's a Fusion 360 model of a simple part to be made in acetyl. Let's go through how to face one side and then flip it over and face the other. All right, to start, we want to edit this setup we've already made, but you'd create a new setup and then we'll select our body. And we're gonna set it up so that our features are on the bottom because we wanna face the backside first. Basically select our body. We'll select our edges, do that kind of thing. Then I'm gonna use a fixed size box. I know my stock is 12 by 24. The thickness is 0.75. So what's important here is I'm kind of setting where you want it to align in your side view, have it be centered. So our part is only a 700 tall. So we're gonna take 50 thou off, but half of that on each side. So that's pretty much it here. And the first op is just like facing, trivially easy. To do a facing operation, you do 2D and then face. So that's what I have here. So I'll edit this to show you what we've set up. First off, the tool is an SH-150 shear hog made by AB Tools. That is right here. So we've actually modified ours. It was a little bit too long for our machine. Um, basically just cut off the end and then chamfered that because it was too long for our dust boot. But otherwise, it was a really awesome tool that we've used quite a bit. What's cool about shear hogs is they are just incredibly stout tools. The one we have has, it looks more or less like this, but it's only got two cutters instead of three. And they're really nice, nicely made. The ground inserts are just phenomenal, last forever, super sharp. So anyway, the, the way that that's set up, I'll share this in the file. Get that if you're a Patreon member. The SH-150, the cutter has essentially set it up as a face mill, two flutes or cutters and then kind of uh, set up our geometry here. So it should be 1.5. That may have been a measurement error. Shaft is three quarters. The flute length, uh, three eighths of an inch. They're not supposed to be rotated more than, I believe, 10,000 RPMs. But uh, before I knew any better, we were running that at 18,000 RPMs, and it did fine. But since it's an insert cutter, you should probably definitely not do that. Um, we run ours at 12,000. This is the default setting of 300. But we also have, if you haven't done this before, make presets here. So to make a new preset, you just push plus, and then you can make settings for each of your materials. So what we found really great cutting recipe for acetyl to do facing is 10,000 RPMs, 200 inches a minute. That's a 10 thou chip or tooth plunging not too fast. And then ramping is also important. There's some specs on that. Um, you should check out yourself, but uh, it can't take a, a real heavy ramp. Uh, we'll select that, or I'll just push cancel since I already have it selected. I've modified a little bit of this, but basically then that preset pulls in here, which is really nice. So you can use this for different types of machines or different materials, which is how we often use it. So there's my settings. Important thing here is, you know, RPMs and then the cutting feed rate. But we're really shooting for a nice um, surface here on this part that we cut. Other than that, if you head into geometries for this facing operation, I just left it blank. It works great. This facing basically just looks at the whole stock and then cuts to that edge. I left all the heights the same. That's pretty well set too, if you needed to change your bottom height to something else. 
these are often uh, left the same. Pass direction is helpful to change in terms of if you don't like the way it's going, I could change it so that right now it's going kind of uh, in the X direction here, but you could have it go any direction you wanted, 45. Often I'm looking for the most efficient way to do it, or maybe based on finish. Pass extension is also simple. It's just how much past your stock do you want it to go. I used half an inch. The same with stock offset, so that gives you a different version of that that's both X and Y. So we did half an inch in both of those. And then also kind of an important factor, if you haven't edited an expression before for a step over in one of these settings, you right click on it and hit edit expression. And then you can do a whole lot of cool stuff here. So the way we get these is a kind of a parameter that's built in. So you start to see stuff pop up. Tool underscore diameter is what we use here. So that's pulling in what the tool diameter is, which is one and a half. We want to step over 0.75 or 75% of the tool diameter every time it goes. So there'll be a 25% overlap. And that auto calculates though, which is kind of nice. And you can make that a default for this operation by right clicking and saying make default. We want to run in a climb operation. You can do both ways. Climb will get you the best finish and it will look the most consistent if you just do one direction. That's what we chose for this. It's faster to go both ways, but that wasn't what we were optimizing for here. Um, you could do multiple depths. The shear hog can do up to a quarter inch at a time in terms of depth of cut. You're kind of limited by your spindle capability. Same with stock to leave. The rest of this pretty much leave the same push OK, you're going to see the tool paths pop up. So you can see it's taking these blue paths across. The yellow is a linking move, so it's, it's popping up and coming back and shooting again. So if I simulate this, pretty obvious what's going to happen here. We're cutting, kind of leads in off the stock, cuts across, pops up, comes back. I'm going to speed this up. It's going to go really fast. Oh, got lucky. So that's basically what you see going across. Let's go take a look at how we did this on the actual machine. Keep in mind, we have a bunch of info like feeds and speeds on our website post that's easier to digest. Find that link below in the description. So a good facing up, you can barely even tell that it's cutting. You can hear a light cutting noise in the background. Let's see how tiny those chips are. They're a nice length though, so that means that it's getting a nice chip. Normally we'd have on our dust boot to collect some of these chips, but it's easier to see like this, so we leave it off. Got a nice smooth face surface so we can flip this over for the next op. Let's jump back to Fusion. The first side, we can flip over to the second op. So I have a second setup here, which I just right clicked and duplicated. And that's going to copy down here and we'll go through that setup. So if you click activate, it'll flip me over to the right side. To edit that, you'd have to go edit and then come in here and the body will still be selected. You'd want to modify your height so that it takes off that first ha half of the extra, so 25 thou or 725. You'd want to align from the bottom or Z minus. So you'd have the extra space at the top. And then you'd want to adjust your XY so that it's aligned in the proper way for your machine. So these manual NC dwells are something we use in our machine. It's basically a way for us to pass a pause, a dwell, indefinite dwell to the operator. They'll see this note so that they don't essentially make a mistake on the setup. Let's go show you what that looks like on the machine. Here we're flipping the stock over. So we put the just face side down. Then we turn on the vacuum hold down. You can see it sucked down and it's held real tight. Now this is going to look exactly like the last operation because it's exactly like the last operation. I'm going to speed it up here. So 
So it'd actually take about 2 minutes 45 seconds, but I figured we already saw it. Back to Fusion for the next operation setup. Tip 2. Pocketing. And now on to the pocketing operation. The one we use is pocket clearing under 3D. It's a little more intelligent than the 2D version. We've created that operation here. So I'm gonna right click to edit it. Tool we're using is a 5 16ths 4235, which is this uh, Vortex two flute low helix cutter. It's also a up cutter, which is important in plastics. You need to get that material out after you've cut it, but 5 16 is a really nice size for our machine. And this low helix does an amazing job at making a really nice edge in plastics, acetal, UHMW, HTPE. We use it all the time. It's probably our most used plastic tool. So we've set that up in Fusion here. We run that at 18,000 RPMs, 245 inches a minute. And that's like a six thou chip or tooth. So machining boundary, I just had it select the entire thing and tool center on boundary. We're allowing it to look from top of the model to the bottom of the model. Our passes, we did set a maximum step over. Let's see what our expression is. Tool diameter times 0.5. So half of the tool width step over. This is a pretty conservative setup. We aren't looking to rush this. Use climb plastics maximum roughing step down half an or 0.4 of an inch which you could go a little bit more if you needed to flat area detection is important here so it's looking for places where it's flat in the model which all of this is but it helps to optimize different places where it's going to step down through and then i have a stock to leave set for radial and axial of 20 thou so i can come and clean that up afterwards in terms of helixing uh, 12, 12 degrees ramp from 0.12. See how that calculates. That looks pretty good. It's going to clear out essentially all of the major amount of material. That's why I call it rough here. Let's go see that operation on the machine. Keep in mind this part that we're cutting is slightly different than the cam model I'm showing you. The operation settings are just the same though. Here's the next step down. Just about done with the roughing pocket here, just this one little area to go. That's it with the pocket. Let's pause there and go back to Fusion. Tip three, parallel finishing. So to make a nice pocket here, we need to do something to finish the bottom of the pocket first. So we're gonna use parallel under 3D. It's right here. I'm gonna edit it. So the tool we're using is a Vortex 6845 here. So the idea with this tool is it's good for finishing the bottom of pockets. So we've got that set up. Similar feeds and speeds, since it's a half inch tool, basically the same as a 5 16 for us. 18,000 RPMs, 240 inches a minute. Similar settings otherwise. We're selecting the boundaries of the inside pockets here, and then have an avoid touch face so that it doesn't come up and try and touch this top already faced finish surface. I've got some radial stock to leave so that it doesn't hit the outside wall. So we're gonna do a cleanup pass with the contour, step over. I just set it to point two, and that's it. Basically, this is just gonna go down in a climb cut, down and come back in the air. Set down again. It's going to do the same thing for this little pocket area. So if I simulate that, it's just going to take that little bit of stock to leave. And since this tool is meant to do bottom finishing, it's going to be a lot nicer finish than that other low helix tool, which is more meant for chip removal. I 
All right, let's go check it out on the machine. You can hear me in the background. I'm a little excited. This finish is just what I'm looking for. Tip four to decontour. Okay, there's just a couple operations left. We're going to use the 4235 that we started with to do some 2D contour. So it's the same operation under 2D contour uh, used in two different ways. So this is a cleanup edge. So we had some radial stock to leave. It's just gonna come and clean those up. And then this is a full depth cutout. We'll go through the cleanup edge one first. So I'm gonna edit that one. Feed rate, slowed it down a little bit to 235, kept it at 18,000 RPMs, same settings. Then here we're just selecting the contours we want to clean up. So it's going to basically just follow the inside of wherever that arrow is. The bottom heights, the selected contour, climb milling still. We're doing a one thou axial stock to leave. It's pretty common so that you don't accidentally gouge into the nicely finished bottom surface. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Turn off the ramp. So it looks like that. All right, so this cutout, it's a little bit different. It's a full depth cutout. Let's edit that. 18,245 inches a minute. The geometry selected is the outside contour, obviously. Stock bottom, we're using a swirl board here, so we're gonna cut a little bit past 10 thou. Left climb milling still. Roughing passes, this is a little different. So we do a roughing pass so that the final pass is a nice cleanup at full depth. I can show you that a little bit better uh, when we do the simulation. Right here, basically set one is step over. This maximum step over doesn't matter all that much. Where you change the step over though, is up here. So we have that set to 0.025. So that's our final step over amount. Multiple depths, we're doing 350 step down. We're only doing one finishing step down. We want to finish only at final depth. That way we don't finish at every level we step down. Makes a nice clean finished edge. You also need rough final checked for that to be checked. Otherwise we just have a ramping angle of 20. So let's simulate those two. We'll just select both with shift, then push simulate. You can see the nice cleanup edge situation here. Some kind of sky reflection, that's nice. Cleaning up all those scallops. Just gonna follow those through the other two. And then we're gonna go right into our 2D cutout of the whole part. So that's like 350 down. You can see the little stock to leave there that we're gonna clean up. There you can see it's cutting right to the edge, full depth. So it's kind of like a hem operation, but a nice finished cleanup. That way you don't have any edge marks from your step down. Let's go see how that cuts. We're zooming with the 4235. This is the edge cleanup operation. Here's that 2D cutout of the whole part in my hand. You can tell slotting like this is a lot more engagement and harder on the tool and very confusing for the autofocus on my camera. It looks like a disaster, but it's not. Those are just chips packed into the cut. It's another reason why you want to do that final pass to clean everything up. 
You can tell it's on its finishing pass by how large these chips start to get. You can see them flying off. They're a lot longer. And there's our acetal part. Hope you learned something about machining acetal today. And if you want to get this fusion model with all the feeds and speeds and the tools already set up for those operations, go check out the link in the description to our blog post and you can get that there. If you want to support the channel but don't want a Patreon-like subscription, Buy Me A Coffee is the perfect option. The idea of buy me a coffee is to offer someone a cash equivalent of buying them a drink as a thank you. It's a one-time thing to show your support for the channel and keeps the content and coffee flowing. Look for the link below for buy me a coffee. If you want to get our cat and cam models that we show in the videos, subscribe to our Patreon at cnc.money. Thanks. If you haven't subscribed, it's imperative you do. I know if you watched this far, you obviously enjoyed it a little.